Sugar gliders have to be one of the most adorable animals we have here in Australia. But did you know, in at least one place in Australia, these guys are now an invasive species. Stick around guys, we're talking about just how sugar gliders ended up in Tasmania and the problems that they pose. So first of all, when I do say the word sugar glider, I'm referring to sugar gliders in general. In a recent video we put out, we talked about how the sugar gliders that we know and love here in Australia are actually three species. And the sugar gliders in question in this particular case are what we now call the crefts glider. But for the terms of everybody understanding what we're talking about, we'll still consider them sugar gliders. Now, sugar gliders have lived in Tasmania for a long time, and there's actually been a fair bit of debate until recently whether they've been there all along or whether they are in fact introduced. And the reasons we've believed that they're introduced for a long time is that during the early 1800s, which was a time when naturalists were, were pretty common and they had this trend of shooting everything that they found, preserving it and sending it to England, we had no examples of sugar gliders being caught or drawn or trapped or shot and sent over as samples. On top of this, it turns out that the Tasmanian Aboriginals never actually had a word to describe the sugar glider. In fact, there's absolutely no evidence of sugar gliders existing in Tasmania up until the mid-1840s, which of course begs the question, how did these guys get there? Now, the evidence that really sort of resolved the debate was over the last few years, there's been a lot of interest in sugar glider genetics and what makes up the different species of sugar glider. And as scientists went around taking genetic samples from sugar gliders all around Australia, what they found was that the sugar gliders living in Tasmania were genetically almost identical to the sugar gliders living in Victoria and South Australia. And basically what we consider now to be the Crefts glider. Now, Victoria and Tasmania do share quite a few species. Things like long-nosed potteroos, wombats, things like this. But the genetics on each side show the genetic drift of several thousand years, which is what we'd expect considering that we believe that rising sea levels cut Tasmania off somewhere between nine and 25,000 years ago. The genetic drift between the sugar gliders over there and on the mainland, however, suggests that those populations have only been separated for at most a couple of hundred years, which basically means that they've arrived there long after sea levels have rose. This conveniently overlaps with evidence found by the Historical Society of Tasmania of sugar gliders being kept by Petrum people that have moved from Melbourne to Launceston in the 1830s, which happens to be 15 years before the first evidence we have of sugar gliders living in the wild in Tasmania. So with all this in mind, it's pretty safe to say that the gliders that they have in Tasmania, the Crefts gliders, are the same gliders that we get here in Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia, and were introduced after Europeans arrived in Tasmania, making them an introduced species. With all this in mind, however, it might beg the question to many people, well, what's the problem? So what if sugar gliders arrived in Tasmania? They're cute, they're adorable, we love them. And it's true. But these guys, while they do live off things like nectar and pollen, are also incredibly opportunistic. And these guys will eat all sorts of things from invertebrates. And in Tasmania, they've started feeding on things like bird chicks and eggs from endangered species, such as the swift barret, orange-bellied parrot, and 40-spotted pardalote. What we've also found is that unfortunately, as we have more and more deforestation in Tasmania, there's more competition between the introduced sugar gliders and the endangered birds there for nesting hollows. So if a sugar glider finds a nesting hollow that it needs to live in and to sleep in and to breed in, and there happens to be birds there, it won't only evict the birds that are there, it will feed on them at the same time. So we've got this sort of double-edged sword where the sugar gliders have been introduced, they're feeding on the animals, and the more that we reduce the habitat, the more we push these species into conflict with one another. This has gotten bad enough that we've found that the swift parrot, which actually migrates from the mainland of Australia to Tasmania to have somewhere safe to produce their babies, now loses 79% of chicks and eggs to sugar gliders. And 65% of nesting females are actually eaten while they're sitting on the eggs. This is particularly alarming considering in recent years, surveys have shown that there may be as few as 300 adult swift parrots left in the world, making them an incredibly endangered species and every single animal counts. Fortunately, there is some help at hand. Some groups have managed to invent nest boxes that exclude gliders while letting birds in to breed. But the sad reality is we're also having to trap and cull sugar gliders there because we face losing a species that's found nowhere else on earth because of these guys. It's not the sugar gliders fault. We put them in this situation, but if it's a matter of losing a species, 
we've had to resort to, to trapping and culling sugar gliders in Tasmania, which is really sad. As hard to believe as it is that something as adorable as Fidget, our sugar glider, could drive another species into extinction, it is a sad reminder that even though an animal can be native to Australia, or any country for that matter, we can still cause a lot of damage by moving them from one place in that country to another. And the sad reality is it's the birds and the sugar gliders that have to pay the price. But it's one of the unfortunate realities if we want to conserve these species. But I do hope you found this interesting and maybe learnt a thing or two about how sugar gliders arrive in Tasmania and the problems that we face. And if you're a budding ecologist out there and you come up with the solution to this, I'm sure there is people who would be thrilled to hear your idea. But until now and then, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you keep learning things. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, all that kind of stuff. We've got lots more videos coming on back. Between now and next week, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.